the value of cos of cos inverse of minus root 3 by 2 plus 5 by 6. And we know that the range of cos inverse x is 0 to pi. And since it's a negative value, so definitely it will be in the second quadrant. 0 to pi is the first quadrant and second quadrant. Since it is a negative value, so it must be in the second quadrant. And we know that cos pi by 6 is equal to root 3 by 2 and cos pi minus pi by 6 which is negative so we can write minus root 3 by 2 so and hence we can write here cos of cos inverse of so negative root 3 by 2 we can write it as cos pi minus pi by 6 plus pi by 6 so which can be written cos of cos inverse of cos pi pi by 6 plus pi by 6. Which is cos of and we know that pi pi by 6 belongs to pi pi by 6 belongs to the range 0 to pi and hence we know that cos inverse of cos x is equal to x. And hence we can write pi pi by 6 plus pi by 6 which is equal to cos 6 pi by 6 that is cos pi and cos pi value is negative 1. So we can go with an option minus 1. The value of cos of cos inverse of negative 1 by 2 plus pi by 3. We know that the range of cos inverse x is 0 to pi. That is first quadrant and second quadrant. And since negative 1 by 2 is 1 by 2 is negative, so definitely it will be in the second quadrant. So cos inverse of minus 1 by 2 will be in the second quadrant. And we know that cos pi by 3 is equal to 1 by 2. And cos pi minus pi by 3 will be negative 1 by 2. Because cos is negative in the second quadrant. And hence we can write here cos of cos inverse of negative 1 by 2 we can write it as cos pi minus pi by 3 plus pi by 3. So cos of cos inverse of cos pi minus pi by 3 is 2 pi by 3 plus pi by 3. So we can write cos of And we know that cos inverse of cos x is equal to x when x belongs to 0 to pi. And 2 pi by 3, 2 pi by 3 belongs to 0 to pi. It is 120 degrees. So it is lying between 0 to 180 degrees. So we can say cos inverse of cos 2 pi by 3, we can write it as 2 pi by 3 plus pi by 3 which is equal to cos 3 pi by 3 that is cos pi and cos pi value is minus 1. So we can go with an option b minus 1. The value of cos of cos inverse of minus 1 by root 2 plus pi by 4 and we know that 
range of cos inverse x is 0 to pi. That's the first quadrant and second quadrant. And here we required cos inverse of negative 1 by root 2. So for sure it will be lying in the second quadrant since cos is negative in the second quadrant. So it must, it must belongs to the second quadrant. And we know that cos pi by 4 is equal to 1 by root 2. So cos pi minus pi by 4 which will be minus 1 by root 2. That is cos 3 pi by 4 is equal to minus 1 by root 2. So let us write minus 1 by root 2 as cos of cos inverse of cos 3 pi by 4 plus pi by 4 that is cos of and we know that cos inverse of cos x is equal to x whenever x belongs to 0 to pi and here 3 pi by 4 which is 135 degrees belongs to 0 to pi and hence we can add cos inverse of cos x we can write it as just 3 pi by 4 and again plus pi by 4 that is cos 4 pi by 4 which is cos pi cos pi value is minus 1 so we can go with an option b Principal value of sine inverse of 1 by root 2. Let us consider the assertion. And the reason is given the principal value of cot inverse of minus 1 by root 3 is pi by 3. We know that range of sine inverse function is minus pi by 2 to plus pi by 2. And since 1 by root 2 is positive, so we can say minus pi by 2 to plus pi by 2 can be considered quadrant 1 and quadrant 3, so quadrant 4. And since 1 by root 2 is positive, so we can consider sine inverse of 1 by root 2 must belong to the quadrant 1. And we know sine pi by 4 is equal to 1 by root 2, so we can write sin inverse of sin pi by 4 which is equal to 1 by root 2 and we have sin inverse of sin x is equal to x we can write sin inverse of sin x is equal to x so whenever x belongs to minus pi by 2 to plus pi by 2 so we can write sin inverse of sin pi by 4 is pi by 4 sorry here so which is equal to pi by 4 so assertion the principal value sin inverse of 1 by root 2 is pi by 4 is true so we can say this is true now let us consider the reason what inverse of minus 1 by root 3. We know that the range of cot inverse x is 0 to pi and negative 1 by root 3. 0 to pi is first quadrant and second quadrant and one minus 1 by root 3 is negative. So we can say cot is negative in the second quadrant. So we can understand that cot inverse of minus 1 by root 3 must belong to the second quadrant. And we know that cot pi by 3 is 1 by root 3. And hence we can write cot pi minus pi by 3 is equal to minus 1 by root 3. Because we want the value in second quadrant. So we can write cot inverse of cot pi minus pi by 3. 
so which is equal to cot inverse of cot 2 pi by 3 2 pi by 3 belongs to the principal range 0 to pi and hence we can write 2 pi by 3 since we know that cos inverse of cos x is equal to x sorry cot inverse of cot x is equal to x whenever x belongs to 0 to pi so here we can write 2 pi by 3 but here in the reason the principal value of cot inverse of minus 1 by root 3 is pi by 3 which is wrong so we can say assertion is true and reason is false we can go with an option c assertion and reason type question the domain of the function sin inverse of 2x minus 1 is 0 comma 1 and the reason the domain of the function sin inverse x is minus 1 comma 1 so we can say clearly that the reason the domain of the function sin inverse x is minus 1 comma 1 which is true now let us consider the assertion given sin inverse of 2x minus 1 and we know that the domain domain of the function is minus 1 comma 1 so we can consider here 2x minus 1 must belongs to minus 1 comma 1 that is minus 1 is less than or equals to 2x minus 1 is less than or equals to plus 1 or adding 1 for the inequality 2x minus 1 plus 1 less than or equals to 1 plus 1 or we can add 0 less than or equals to 2x is less than or equals to 2 or dividing with 2 positive number inequality will not change 2x upon 2 is less than or equals to 2 by 2 and anyhow 0 upon 2 is 0 so which implies here 0 less than or equals to x less than or equals to 1 so we can say x belongs to 0 to 1 means sin inverse of the domain of the function sin inverse of 2x minus 1 can be considered to be 0 to 1 so which is true again and anyhow reason is true so we can say and reason is correct explanation for the assertion so we can say both a and r are true and r is the correct explanation of a which is option a